Every day as the sun rises over Turkana County in the extreme north of the country, a continuous stream of people in various states of hunger, malnutrition and deprivation arrive on foot, by truck and various other means into the waiting arms of the Lutheran World Federation based at the border point between Kenya and South Sudan. This is Nadapal Transit Center, a holding point for the newly arrived asylum seekers mainly from South Sudan. Here at the center we deal with the asylum seekers from South Sudan and uh, when they come here we receive them and then we do a uh, psychosocial assessment and the assessment is basically to identify their vulnerability. It is approximately 117 kilometers from Kakuma refugee camp in Turkana West sub-county. <laughs> Among the thousands of asylum seekers trooping through this transit center every day are unaccompanied or separated minors. These are children who arrive at the border point without any parent or have been separated while on their way here. Children who arrive in the camp are uh, running away from war. They are here to, to seek uh, self, uh, safety and uh, they don't have too many options. Many can't even tell whether their parents are alive or not. They can't trace where their parents are and uh, they have to depend entirely on the agencies to give them a footing. It is lunch hour and as we arrive at the center we find the little ones being served with porridge as they await their relocation to Kakuma refugee camp. This is after their flight history has been established and their first best interest assessment has been determined. When these children come, we have the psychosocial assessment form, which identifies immediately this is a separated child, this is an accompanied minor. At the transit border, we focus uh, mainly on unaccompanied and separated children and other vulnerable children. Other vulnerable children we may have survivors of SGBV, we may have children with disability and other categories, not, not necessarily an accompanied and separated. So there is a rapid risk assessment that, 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 is, that is conducted to inform protection concerns and also uh, be able to, in advance, uh, prepare the social worker um, at reception. Because after the assessment, the next point is the reception center or the registration center. By the time they are arriving already, the social worker there knows. Uh, they, 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 I have 150 and accompanied and separated other vulnerable children that I, I immediately need to concentrate on. The relocation journey to Kakuma is not an easy task, as the rains are heavy and the roads are nearly impassable. The convoy makes a steady journey that takes approximately two hours with protection from the Kenya police in support of the refugee operations. This is due to the increased insecurity challenges along the route. However, the refugees have to get to the main reception center at Kakuma refugee camp for further assessments before being resettled into the community based on their immediate needs. Immediately when these children arrive here at the reception center from the border, the first thing that we do as child protection and the entire reception management is to receive these people, then we do the social assessment form. This social assessment form comprises all the entire families that includes the children and also the adults. That's when now we can identify the unaccompanied minors and separated children that we take them to our office as child protection, then we start doing the assessment. We have now two categories of assessment that we normally do as child protection. We have the screening form and best interest assessment. That is when now we can identify the unaccompanied minors and separated children. Then unaccompanied minors, because they have already come alone without any adult relative, that is when now we can start doing the process of fostering. Then already we have already connected with our colleagues, caseworkers in the community, who have already trained the foster, foster parents. Our work is to see 
as a team in this pool of, 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 of children with many types of problems which we call protection concern. What can be done which can be to the best advantage for the child? According to data from the United Nations Humanitarian Commission, UNHCR, Kakuma Refugee Camp has a total population of approximately over 183,000 people from different nationalities, including Burundi, Congo Brazzaville, Djibouti, Democratic Republic of Congo, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. 60% of this population are children below the age of 18 years with different kinds of vulnerabilities that need proper and urgent attention. We focus on the most vulnerable, in this case um, unaccompanied minors and also the separated children who um, currently are at um, uh, 14,226 unaccompanied and separated children. Apart from this population, Yes, also we assist other children who have bi their biological parents, but now you will find that these are just some few specific cases, like right now we have a caseload of 596. These are now children who have their biological parents, but they have other protection concerns that have to be addressed by the child protection. It is 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and in the heat of the afternoon sun, we find Grace Sasani, and her two sons sitting outside their house in the camp, wailing the afternoon away. James Nailo, an 11-year-old boy, is busy doing his homework while his foster mother, Grace, sits beside him, helping. Grace arrived in the camp from South Sudan in 2011 as an accompanied minor. Nidekujanikakapa kidogo through LWF's child protection program, she was able to find a foster parent who took care of her until she has become an adult. And now she's giving back to the community by fostering the 11-year-old James Nailo, who ran away from civil war unaccompanied in 2016. <laughs> A few kilometers from Grace's home within the camp, we find a group of foster parents under a tree having their monthly meeting where they get trained on fostering, discussing some of the challenges and sharing experiences they go through as they keep bringing up these vulnerable kids voluntarily. We rely that there is some South Sudanese who came without no parent. I encourage myself to fostering some children. I'm fostering 11 children. I'm a mother of five, five children. In the program, we ensure that we have foster parents who are trained and they are equipped with skills and knowledge how to manage foster children, considering these are not their biological children. <laughs> Foster parenting is one of the most successful care arrangements under the child protection sector, where vulnerable children, particularly the unaccompanied and separated minors, are given support immediately they arrive in the camp. The community is in such a way that when they hear that there are children who have come from South Sudan, for example, uh, the community leaders and other community members will come to the reception center and um, are able to identify the unaccompanied children that they are comfortable fostering. 
for those whom we cannot find the foster parents, we have to provide them, like we place them in child-headed household or group care. And also, there are some other supports that we provide to these children, like material support, psychosocial support. And also, we have to engage them in child-to-child -child activities so that at least to keep them active and then to forget all the trauma that they have gone through. This is not only to ensure that they enjoy their rights, but also to make sure that they live in a safe and secure environment. It removes the burden of that child being lonely and is feeling the responsibility of having a parent or fitting in a situation where it doesn't meet so much the biological parent, but there is this parent who is really featuring the background of a biological father or a biological mother because in as much as the child is fostered all the rights all the privileges of a child is being catered for by the foster parent be it in going to school the child going to school and there is more confidence in it because the child is secure and like being alone in the block or in the community for the child protection sector to achieve its goals and meet its key intended objectives within the organization, it has been organized into several departments, namely case management, outreach or host community unit, and the data management department that has a new digital system of collecting and sharing information thanks to UNICEF and UNHCR for providing financial support. With the support of UNICEF, we have established uh... Uh, a child protection information management system and we have been upgrading it to a new version and this has been very helpful. It puts all the data, all the information of the children in our fingertips. Uh, this helps us to have closer follow-ups, uh, easy to retrieve details and uh, where referrals are required they are all done through the system and uh, proper reminders and up, up, updating or, uh, of, of, of details around the children is done. Uh, the system also allows us to uh, address uh, and prioritize extremely vulnerable cases by assessing uh, who are the mo what are the most vulnerable cases that need urgent and uh, quick attention and which ones can be staggered and, or, or, or delayed a little. So I think by and large uh, this system has helped us to improve uh, the level of protection both in terms of uh, urgency and quality of protection that we give to the children in the camp. Since we started using the system we have been able to reunify 15 children back to South Sudan with their parents and also we have inter-camp reunification that happens within Kakuma. In every year we are able to reunify more than 500 children within the camp. These are children that we trust their parents within the camp and then through the help of the system we can track the information and then we bring, after the assessments, we bring the families together. Yes, and so the system is assisting us very much when it comes to family reintegration. While young refugees are almost easy to place with foster families, it is the older adolescents and specifically the boys who find it difficult to integrate with the new families. Hence, they may end up in child-headed families or in group care, which needs a much more intensified vigilance by LWF officials and other partners in the camp. Between 15 and 16, 17, it's a little bit hard to get. Uh, parents who like fostering such because of the issues that come with teenage yeah they many a times the foster parents will tell you that uh, during teenage years that the girls are stubborn even the boys you know yeah so they feel like it will be more trouble yeah to them as we drive inside the camp we find several children of school going age, washing cars and motorbikes and others selling different food commodities on the streets during the day. Refugee camp. 
wakanileta kwa shule, wakanipa, wakanipatia uniform, fitabu, mafuta, sabuni, na wakanilipia pesa ya mtiani. Trukana uh, is a semi-arid area, lots of challenges. Uh, the weather, the drought, uh, the rains are, are quite scarce. And um, the levels of poverty are quite high. And now with the presence of uh, the refugee camp, this camp becomes uh, a pull factor. This is not only a problem inside the camp where child labor is rampant, but also at the host community where children under 18 years are being used to generate income instead of going to school due to several reasons. The locals feel like uh, the refugees are better in terms of food, in terms of water, in terms of those facilities. So they get pulled to the refugee camp. Those are, are challenges which are very unique here. They are not in any other place, maybe except for Gariza where there's a refugee camp. Most of the children in host community are engaged in child labor due to the high level of poverty and the illiteracy of the parents. So child protection takes the initiative to withdraw these children from the streets and roast them to school and gives awareness also to the parents. And also it does IGA, income generating activities to the parents. They give them cash assistance to start up businesses so that the parents can have a source of income and let the children be at school. As from 2014 to 2017, as we are speaking now, we've managed to help 2,325 children, and we still have some more than 1,000 children who have not yet been reached because of lack of funds. The child protection sector does not work in isolation. As the children keep growing, they need education, safe shelter, food, clothing, and psychosocial support like playing and counseling to help them manage the difficult situations they have gone through in the past. Even though the child protection sector has been very successful in many ways, the constant growing number of vulnerable children in the camp and with the newly opened Kalobeye settlement more financial and human resources are needed on the ground for LWF to fully meet the urgent needs of these children. Out of 110,000 children in the camp, 14,000 are under protection and care. These are majorly separated and unaccompanied children. The level of resources to give them adequate support, replacing what a parental situation would have done, require significant resources that we don't have. So this is one of the greatest challenges. For LWF, child protection is not only the specific child protection program, which has certain, certain activities, um, both legal activities, foster families and other activities, but it's also about ch child safeguarding all the work that we do, that it should be child safe uh, and child friendly. What gives me a joy is that the children get an opportunity to be embraced in a family setup. Nashukuru LWF juu aliyesa kubadilisha maisha yangu na nikaweza kurudi shule.